down in Arkansas. down in Arkansas. down in Arkansas. Easter time for every age. And Easter eggs are all the rage. I lay mine right here on the stage. Down in Hollywood. Light Boy presents the Bob Burns Show. Bringing you latest news of those kinfolks in Van Buren. More doings of the Arkansas Traveler. Mike Jones and his city slickers. Now, here he is himself, Bob Burns. Well, I certainly am much obliged. I heard what you said out there, lady. The minute I walked out here, I heard a lady say, well, now, I had no idea he'd be that pretty. <laughs> I, I ain't dressed up tonight. The, the only only Easter stuff I put on was my two-tone shoes. Hey, oh, boy, they are pretty. I did, buy a, I did buy a new suit this Easter, though, but I ain't gonna wear it. I always buy a new suit every year because it's, well, I don't know, it's kind of a throwback to the time when I was a little boy, because we was kind of poor, and and the only clothes I ever got was the one Mama made out of Papa's old. And I'll never, it ain't no laughing matter, lady. I, I remember, I remember one time when Papa went down to Cy Cordell's store, and me and Mama went with him, and he was picking out a pair of pants, and and so I picked the pants up and turned them wrong side out, and I said, I don't like the color of these things. And the clerk says, why, what are you talking about, son? He says, that part don't show. That's the wrong side. I says, that's the part that'll be showing when I get them. <laughs> I remember just so well that at one time, Mama didn't have, she couldn't make me a pair of pants. I was a big boy. Couldn't make me a pair of pants after what Papa had left to his, so she took two of his pair of pants and made me one pair. And I was so embarrassed, I told Mama, I said, Mama, I can't wear these things because the front half is a checkered affair and the, the back half is striped. And Mama says, don't you feel bad, son. She says, you won't be coming and going at the same time. <laughs> but as I say, I did. I bought me a victory suit and I ain't going to wear it. I, I Honestly, there's stuff that you can get nowadays. The, the first suspicion I had that it had cotton in it was I hung it in the closet and the moths throwed it back at me. <laughs> I, I went, now you'd think that you, you, the, the pants had some, so much cotton in them they stood at attention when the band played Dixie. <laughs> now you'd think offhand that you ought to get a pretty fair suit of clothes for $11.45. <laughs> But I did get a five-year diary with the suit. But I got out the first time I put that suit on. I got out in Hollywood Boulevard and, and uh, a rain came. And before I could get in under shelter, some of that rain hit on that suit. You know, that, that them pants ran up my leg like a Venetian blind. <laughs> and the five-year diary shrunk up to a year and a half. <laughs> But I couldn't wear the suit way too small for me, and so I give it to my cousin Luther, Luther Roundtree. He's on Spike Jones. Luther, I wish you'd come up and show the folks this. There, there it is, folks, in his suit. That's, I wish all you could see that suit. It's sort of a putrid blue. That Luther, how are you feeling, boy? Oh, I feel fine. I, I got a letter from home, and Papa was chosen to play the Easter Bunny in the Easter Parade. Oh, I want to tell you, folks, Luther's papa is my uncle's slug. You know, that's, that's my drinking uncle. <laughs> so, Luther, that's quite an honor. Yeah, pretty near every fella in town tied out for the part. Well, how did they happen to pick Uncle Slug to play the part of the Easter Bunny? Oh, he was the only one that had pink eyes. <laughs> Luther, you better get back up. You better get back up on your stool because I see Spike Jones all drawn back to play the Wang Wang Blues. I remember when that used to be my great great grandpa Pelican Snelson's favorite cue. He didn't live to hear the way Spike Jones renders the number, but it probably just as well the shock would have killed him anyhow. <laughs> Uh, uh, Spike, is your vocalist Del Porter ready? Yeah, Bob. Well, go ahead. Well, I 
I'm trying to make is that Spike Jones is popular, and so is Life Boy. That's a fact we know all along, but it sure is heartwarming to have it confirmed by a highly respected, disinterested outside organization. Oh, you mean that Crosley survey made by True Story magazine? Exactly. And the more I think about the fact that this survey was made without our even knowing it, the more pleased I am to know that all the popular brands of soap on the market, Life Boy was found in more homes than any other. It doesn't rank near the top. It is top. Well, now, tell me, Dick, how did the true story Crosley folks go about finding that out? Did, did you just go up to people and ask them what kind of soap to use? No, sir. They put containers right in the bathrooms of hundreds of families in ten leading cities of America and left them there for two months. Now, these families threw the wrappers of the soap they actually used into those receptacles. And later, the research experts picked them up, sorted out those wrappers and cartons and counted them. Empty cartons of Life Boy were found in more of those containers than any other soap. Now, I think that is proof positive that Life Boy is used in more homes than any other soap. Don't you, Bob? Yeah, that certainly is a fact in those ten big typical cities. Say, Dick, uh, can you give the folks one reason why Life Boy is America's number one bad soap? Well, Bob, there's lots of reasons, but if you just want one, I'd say it's because Life Boy is the only soap especially made to stop... <laughs> Approaches the town where the Arkansas traveler holds forth as the local newspaper editor. Let's see what it has to do with the conference he's having in his office with the manager of the town's leading store. Ah, oh, come on. Say you'll do a traveler. It's Easter. That's just it, Frank. I want to stay peaceful. It'll be a lot of fun for everybody. Sure, for everybody but me. All we want you to do is be master of ceremonies and judge of our Easter fashion show at the store. Nothing to it, really. Nobody could put our show over like you, Traveler. Oh, what I know about women's clothes, Frank. Well, I was 27 years old before Mom had let me look at the lady's side of the laundry list. <laughs> I'll brush you up on what they're wearing this year. No, no, Frank. But besides, I'm not sure it's right to be putting on fashion shows in these times. Well, look at it like this, Traveler. Women's looks are important to morale, aren't they? Does a soldier or a sailor home on furlough want to see everybody dressed in last year's clothes? Mm, I don't know, Frank. 
If I come home hungry to see somebody I love, I wouldn't care if you wore an accordion pleated barrel trim with salami. <laughs> Think it over, Traveler. The theme of the show is what the well-dressed woman of today is wearing. No, no, Frank. Next to a local Better Baby show, I can't think of anything that would make me more enemies than judging a fashion show. Especially with your idea of using well-known society girls as models. Is that your final answer? Sure is. If you ever decide to have a contest for prize pigs, then call on me because I'll be right at home then. Okay, traveler. Thanks anyway. Don't mention it. Oh, Dewey, show Mr. Monroe out. Yes, sir. Then don't disturb me for an hour, Dewey. I've got to finish this editorial prodding the city for storm drains, or we'll never get them before the flood hits us again. Yes, sir. And if the storm drain situation isn't hey, clear Paul. up... Dewey, I distinctly told you... Yeah, but it's Mrs. McIntosh Knox, boss. What does she want? To kick about the picture of her summer home we ran in last night? To... Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Knox? Come in. How do you do, Traveler? May I see you privately? Sure can. Close the door from the outside, do it. Yes, sir. Traveler, I believe the cultural standards of our time should be maintained. And for that reason, I consented that my daughter Evelyn appear as one of the models at the fashion show tomorrow afternoon at Mason's department store. Oh, so Evelyn will help show off the season's crop of, of culottes and jaybots, huh? Precisely. And it is, well, it's of some importance that she wins. Now, hold on there. Where did you hear that I was going to be judged at that fashion show? Why, it's common talk, is it not? And I thought you'd wish to know so as not to make any mistakes in awarding the prizes. Well, Mrs. Knox, in the first place, I'm not going... Oh, excuse me. Yeah, do it. Hey, boss, Mrs. Edward Horsley's out here to see you. And you know what Mrs. Knox thinks of her. Holy smoke, we'll try to hold things till I clear the situation in here. Okay. But this looks like a job for Eisenhower. <laughs> hey, there she starts toward the office. Uh, well... Thanks for dropping in, Mrs. Knox. I'll do what I can for Evelyn. Now, here, go through this side door. Avoid the crush out there. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Oh, there you are, Traveler. Your office boy said, Well, I'm afraid I did interrupt. Quite all right, Adele. I'm through with my business. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Traveler. I know you understand why I came. A mother's pride. I shall say good day. Good day, Adele. Good day, Julia. Well, one certainly encounters all sorts in a newspaper office. You know, Mrs. Horsley, it'd be a mighty fine thing if you and Mrs. Knox could get to be friends. I shall make my errand brief, Traveler. My daughter, Maxine, has consented to be one of the society's models at the fashion show at Mason's tomorrow afternoon. Her deep sense of duty made her accept. It goes without saying, I believe, that her station demands that she be judged the best-dressed woman there. Hey, how did the rumor get out that Maxine will be the fifth model in the parade. I'm sure you will recognize her at once, however. She has, I believe, an unmistakable distinction. Now, listen here, Miss. Now, Horsley. Traveler, I know you intend to judge fairly. The fact that my husband is one of your heaviest advertisers will have, I'm sure, nothing to do with it. Oh, goodness. I'm late for my committee meeting at three. Good day, Traveler. You listen to me, Miss Horsley. I knew this is just the kind of thing that had happened. I... Oh, hello, Dewey. She's gone, boss. She's talking to yourself. Yes. Yeah. I'll be talking to myself a lot more, too, if I don't act fast. Uh, Julie, get me Frank Monroe at Mason's store. Don't route the call through London. Sheep, boss, what happened? You're white as a sheep. I'm mad, Dewey. Plain mad. I never wanted to tell two women off so hard in my life. I feel like quitting this job so I can do it. Monroe isn't in? Have him call me the second he does come. Peace. Peace on earth. Why in the world two women like that with all they've got can't play fair, I'll never know. Fighting over social problems. Our boys out there fighting for us on seven fronts. They say, though, boss, that Evelyn Knox wanted to go to work out at the aircraft plant and her mother wouldn't let her. Huh? What'd you say, Dewey? I said that... Hey, wait, wait now. Didn't that good-looking secretary we had around here go to work out there? Let's see, what was her name? Margaret Kelly. Yeah, she took a course on welding. Dewey, I'm taking a run out to the aircraft plant. I need a drive. Well, what if Monroe calls? Tell him I'll talk later. Uh, what about that editorial on the storm drain? That can wait, too. Find me my pass to get into the aircraft plant. I 
too busy to talk now, traveler. Well, can it be at lunch hour? All right, but I've only got half an hour. I'll go back outside and wait for you. <laughs> I'll do it, traveler. I think it's a very funny idea. Well, Margaret, can you get the girls we need? Oh, sure I can. Girls off my ship. Don't worry about us, traveler. Thanks, Margaret. I'll do the rest. Say, that's great. What made you change your mind? Oh, I just decided that at Easter time I ought to do something. After all, everybody can't roll on the White House lawn. And besides, I've been thinking about women's clothes and the idea sort of intrigued me. Well, okay, traveler. The fair starts at two sharp tomorrow in the jade room at the store. I'll be there, Frank. <laughs> Now, ladies, I give you today's whole judge and master of ceremonies, our esteemed newspaper editor, the Traveler. Well, thank you for that skinny hand, lady. Now, you might, uh... Now, you, you ladies might think I'm kind of out of my element up here on a platform judging a fashion show. But I want to tell you, you're looking at the Scaparelli of Arkansas. It's the truth. I've been studying up about gay butts and culottes and bolero jackets, and I want to tell you, I'm one man who knows the difference between an evening gown and a nightgown. Now, the theme of this show is what the well-dressed woman of today is wearing. So, let's get things going. Music. Now our first model comes through the curtains and down the ramp. Miss Mabel Jones, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Peabody Jones of this city. Miss Jones has chosen to model a... Uh, let me see. Here's the data, Traveler. Oh, yes, yes. Miss Jones is wearing a trim tailored suit of blue wool gabardine cloth. Uh, notice the notched lapel this year and the finger-length coat set off with a J-bot of lace. Wasn't that something? Now the second model comes down the ramp. Hey, that girl isn't on the list. And what's she doing dressed like that? It's all right, Frank. She's a late entry. Now, ladies, this is Miss Margaret Kelly, daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Brian Kelly of Railroad Street. Miss Kelly, I might explain, is a welder at the aircraft plant. The outfit she has on is known as the Lockheed Lounge Ensemble. <laughs> now... You will note the creation of plain denim overalls equipped with a zipper and attractively spotted with machine oil and grease. Those well-worn shoes on her feet are known as brogans. You'll note also the comfortable bobby socks in the bandana turban to keep flowing hair out of flying forces. Now, the next model, next model is Miss Jessie Hopkins, also the local aircraft plane. Stop it. Those girls aren't supposed to be here. This is making a joke of things. Oh, now, take it easy, Frank. I'm the judge. Now, ladies, Miss Hopkins is wearing a fetching pair of dungarees equipped with a special belt to hold a hammer, monkey wrench, and chisel. Instead of a turban, however, she wears a snood for the head. The lunch bucket is by Woolworths. It's used by Sears Roper. And now the next model. <laughs> If the storm drain situation isn't settled... But... There he is, Adele. Just wait till we tell him what we're going to do. Now, hold on, ladies. I can explain the whole thing. Explain? I, I put that girl up to it. She and her ship out at the plant come in just as they were, dusty and greasy. I gave them the prize because I honestly believe they had on what the well-dressed woman of today is wearing. Well, go on. That's all. I did it for you, too, really. If I'd awarded the prize to either of your daughters, I never would have heard the end of it, and neither would the town. Well, Traveler, we've come to confess. We saw through what you did. And we've learned our lesson. From now on, we cooperate. Hmm? Yes. 
Adele and I have agreed to work together on a project to help the war effort. We're jointly sponsoring a show for better babies among mothers in defense. And we've picked you, Traveler, to be sole judge. Isn't that a wonderful idea, Traveler? Oh, now, wait a minute here. You want me to judge a baby contest in this city? Precisely. Uh, just a minute, please. Oh, must you call someone at this moment? Yeah, my draft board. I'm asking them as a personal favor to make me one A. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment with some strong stories about his weak relatives. Say, Dick, have you got a minute to spare? Well, Spike Jones, well, what's on your mind, Spike? Well, me and the boys have been having trouble. Every time we start to play, there'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. Something happens, and it turns into the song of the Volga Boatman. Listen. Mm. I mean, Dick? Yeah, I see what you mean. And man, is that a vivid picture of heat and work. Now, there's a combination which is bound to spell perspiration. And it might spell... Oh. Yeah, but not if you use Life Boy, because Life Boy beats CO, stops it cold. So take a daily bath with Life Boy, and warm weather and the honest sweat of victory gardening won't cost you your popularity. Dick, I think I know how I can finish that number. How, Spike? Like this. <laughs> Thank you, boys. You know, uh, I bet you a lot of people that heard our show tonight are wondering how I could play that part in that fashion show as good as I did. It's, I thought I'd done right good tonight, that, but it just happens that I had a little experience here. Just the other day, I heard they were having a fashion show in one of the big department stores here in Hollywood, and I went over to this fashion show to get some at but doggone it, it was just my luck. That day there was modeling bathing suits. Have you seen them, those new ones? Boy, was I glad I took Grandma with me. <laughs> I never saw such skimpy things in my life. Uh, they, they make them out of cotton now, of course. And, and I declare, it, it just looked to me like the, 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 to make three of those bathing suits, they use just about as much cotton as you'd find in the top of an aspirin box. <laughs> Why, when, I want to tell you that, that when they, when them girls come marching down that ramp with them little old skimpy things on, Grandma looked at them and she nudged me. She says, Robin, if the girls could have wore them things when I was a girl, what a grandpa I could have give you. <laughs> I, I don't know why it is. It just looks like women go out of their way to embarrass me with their style. Now, just night before last, I was having dinner, and I was sitting right across the table from a lady in one of them strapless evening gowns. Ain't that a terrible thing? I was never so worried in my life. Uh, why, the truth, I was just worried to death. I was afraid when she got up, that gown wouldn't get up with her. But now yeah, I don't know I don't know why it, women it just look like they'll do anything to keep up with style and they'll sacrifice anything in the world. There's a lady right down there right now sitting down there. She's got 18 buttons on each glove. Just imagine that 18 buttons on each glove. I'll bet you her old man's at home right now trying to hold his pants up with a rusty nail. <laughs> But if these women, if they just take a good, sensible style and stay with it. Now, year before last, you remember, everything had to be high waist. Then last year, they went back to low waist and stuff. Again. Now this year, they're going back to high waist. Well, I'm telling you, it's getting so when a fella hugs his girl, he don't know whether he's going to choke her to death or trip her. <laughs> now, I, I suppose... 
I suppose I, I'm the last man in the world that should. I ain't got no business trying to tell people what to wear. But I have got a friend that just dropped in, and I don't believe there's a man in Hollywood more qualified to tell you what is the fashion of today for both men and women than this man. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear a word from Bill Powell. Come out, Bill. Boy, is he snappy. I'm telling you. So you he just I know Bill awfully well. Now you'd be surprised. I was in the in the parade, the Hollywood Easter parade last year. And, and I'll never forget they lined us up uh, off of Hollywood Boulevard. And they lined us up in order of our importance and by the way we dressed. And I never will forget, just as Bill Powell turned into Hollywood and Vine, I was just peeking up over the Canadian Rockies. <laughs> Well, Bill, uh, you promised to give us a line on what's fashionable this year. Well, Bob, that won't be difficult to do. Because the people who are really in fashion are the ones who are buying bonds and bonds and more bonds. The second war loan has just been opened. And our government has set for the goal of that loan $13 billion. That's so large an amount that it's almost impossible for us to understand, I know. But it wouldn't be hard to understand a son, or a brother, or a sweetheart who is badly wounded, perhaps even lost, because the ones at home hadn't supported him with the arms and ammunition. Now perhaps you'll say that you're putting 10% of your earnings into war bonds. Well, that's great, but it's not enough. To give our fighting men the help they need, Every man, woman, and child in this country must invest every cent above the bare necessities of life. Invest it in peace and security and the land we love. They must buy every bond they can. And the ones who are doing it, they're the people this Easter who are really in fashion. Thank you, Bill. You really have an idea there, Bill. I know that in this war there's a lot of us who won't be able to get over, but at least we can come across. Thanks again, Bill. <laughs> Folks, uh, just before I say good night, I'd like to add one more word, and I'm deadly serious about this. Now, you've all seen today's newspaper headlines telling about the Japs murdering some of our own American flyers. I know that makes you just as mad deep down inside as it makes me. No, we're not going to murder any prisoners because we're a civilized people. But I know it makes you feel that you personally want to do something to get even with Tojo and the warlords who ordered those brutal executions. And you can, every one of them. Save your kitchen fast. Save every drop of fat you can from your cooking. Take it to your meat dealer. Within three weeks, it'll be made into bombs and bullets, which we hope will explode right in Tojo's face. Every pound of fat you turn in will hasten the sweet revenge we want for those heroic boys. The fat you save digs Tojo's grave. Thank you. Folks. <laughs> If your beard is tough and your face tender, what you want is Life Boy Shaving Cream. Life Boy's Stay Moist Lather picks up and holds longer, more moisture than any fast-drying lathers. That means the last half of your shave is as smooth and easy as the first. If you ever have to use cold water or a used blade, then you really need Life Boy's richer, heavier Stay Moist Lather. Try Life Boy Shaving Cream. <laughs> Makers of Life Boy will again bring you Bob Burns next week at the same time with more about his relatives, more doings of the Arkansas Traveler, and Spike Jones and his city slickers. Remember, Life Boy is the only soap especially made to stop. <laughs> to 
program has come to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.